Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a cloud advocate working at Microsoft and welcome to the session Hybrid Management Technologies. I'm part of the Azure engineering team uh, and focusing on Azure management as well as on hybrid technologies. Now in this session, we're gonna learn how you can use Azure hybrid management services to make your on-premises environment even better. Now let's jump right in here and we will have a look at Tailwind Traders. Uh, Tailwind Traders is our demo company representing everyone and no one at the same time. And we're gonna look at what challenges they're facing uh, and what Azure hybrid services they're using to solve those problems. Now, if you look at the Tailwind Traders hybrid environment, uh, we can like see a couple of reasons why it gets increasingly complex. So the first one is being apps, right? They're managing hundreds, if not thousands of different apps. And some of them are very modern apps. Some of them are running on PaaS, in containers, serverless, and they use very modern languages. However, they also have some classic apps which run inside virtual machines or even on physical servers. And guess what? They're not going away uh, just right now in the next couple of months. They'll probably stay there for a couple of years, right? And so the Tailwind Traders IT operations staff needs to take care of all these apps and manage those uh, wherever they are running. And that brings us to the next one, the diverse infrastructure they are having. So they have their own data centers, which they need to take care of. They also have uh, some services at service providers. They run some services at branch offices, stores, or factories. And in some cases, some, even some IoT devices as well. And so they also need to manage all of that. And managing all these different locations um, and infrastructures can also be very difficult. Now, even though um, Tailwind Traders uh, chose uh, Microsoft Azure as their primary cloud providers, which is actually a great choice, uh, they also are, are in a multi-cloud environment, right? So they're also using uh, other cloud providers as well. And this can be like a historical thing uh, because like other departments already started using another cloud provider and they're not just moving everything over to Azure um, uh, and spend all that money on, 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 on doing a migration. Or they're just using services from other cloud providers as well for certain reasons. Um, and the Tailwind Trader operation staff basically needs to take care of all of that to manage that and make sure that they're compliant and that they're backed up and they're, that they're secure. The Tailwind Traders management saw the Ignite keynote by Jason Sanders uh, in Orlando 2019, where we talked a lot about our hybrid strategy. And one of the key things he said in that uh, keynote was that we see hybrid as a end state for our customers. It's not just an in-between state until everything is migrated to the cloud. It really is a end state where they basically we see the need that they can use the cloud and Azure, but they can also, or they also need to run some uh, services on prem in their own data centers in factories uh, and at the edge if you will now again we have a lot a big portfolio there we have azure iot with a lot of different services there to manage our iot or your iot infrastructure uh, we also have our azure stack family with azure stack hub Azure Stack Edge and Azure Stack HCI for your in, like virtual infrastructure, uh, as well as bringing Azure services wherever you need them and run AI at the edge. Uh, but in this session, we're really gonna focus about the management services, which have been there for a longer time already, but not a lot of people didn't know about them, that they can actually use them as well for their on-prem environment. And we're also gonna focus on uh, Azure Arc, which is a new announcement, which brings Azure services uh, as well as Azure management to any infrastructure. So we're gonna have a look at how Tailwind Traders is actually gonna use these. And we are gonna start with um, that Tailwind Traders decided to implement Azure hybrid technologies to better manage and extend their on-premises environment with Azure cloud services. Now, for therefore, in this session, we're gonna have a look at a couple of the different management challenges here. So the first one really is about disaster recovery and how they can actually use Azure hybrid services um, to make it less complex and save money and basically set up Azure 
as a disaster recovery place. The next thing we want to have a look at is software updates, right? So Taven traders, IT operations, they need to manage their servers and keep them up to date. And they need to figure out which servers are not compliant with our update uh, policies uh, and then basically go out and patch these servers. They also uh, need to want to use Azure to make their high, um, file server environment better. So they want to make sure that they replicate file servers from different locations so they can basically use the same files uh, the, like on all their locations and offices. And then they want to go out and basically manage all those servers um, uh, across their different environments. Um, so they want to make sure that they are organized and governed uh, in the right way. And I'm going to have a look at that at the end. So for most of the demos, I'm going to show you something called Windows Admin Center. And if, you, if you're not familiar with Windows Admin Center, it's basically our server management tool you can download for free. You can basically go out and manage your on-prem servers, but also your Azure servers if you want to. And again, it's a free install. It doesn't need to be connected to the cloud at all. Um, it basically gives you a web-based user interface for, to manage your servers, right? And clusters and Azure Stack HCI installations as well. So you also don't need to install that on every server. You can install it on a single server and it will use PowerShell remoting in the background to basically go out and manage your systems um, remotely. Now this will replace some like local only tools like certificate management, device manager, all that stuff, which we have some very like fancy MMC consoles available. Uh, you can now do that uh, web-based. Uh, however, that all said, Windows Admin Center also easily allows us and customers basically to onboard Azure services to their uh, hybrid environment. So that's why we're going to use it for most of the demos here. Uh, however, uh, all of that can also be done um, without the use of Windows Admin Center if you don't have it or you don't want to install it. So let's have a look at the first challenges here. And this is all about uh, disaster recovery. Um, so obviously Tailwind Traders has a lot of different challenges when it comes to disaster recovery because it's not an easy task, right? Um, so there are distance requirements. There's like, how do I handle the initial replication? Um, it's very inflexible. But the biggest ones I think are really costs and complexity. When it comes to costs, uh, Tailwind Traders is paying a lot of money to different vendors to get basically that um, uh, those disaster recovery tools in place and making sure that they have the right licenses. And the other thing is it's very complex to manage. You have to think some locations, they don't have a date, second data center or the data center is too close or too far away, uh, too small. They don't want to spend too much hardware on it. Um, so it, it's very complex to manage all these requirements. Now let's have a look how Tailwind Traders actually can use Azure hybrid services to make that much, much easier. Now, how does Tailwind Traders solve their challenges with their current disaster recovery strategy using Azure Site Recovery? So for that, we're gonna show a quick demo about Azure Site Recovery. Here, I'm in the Windows Admin Center console. You can see here it's a web-based console. I installed that locally, and I'm right now remotely managing my Hyper-V server in the Tailwind Trader environment. You can see here in the middle of the screen, you get some information, an overview about that server itself. But then you can also see a couple of menu items on the left, which we call extensions. Now, if we go here into the menu and we scroll down to virtual machines, we can basically manage our Hyper-V server and the VMs running on it. We get some overview what's going on on that server. And if we click on inventory, you can see here all the virtual machines on that specific server. Now I want to replicate that app 02 server to Azure. So for that, I just go to more and then protect VM. Now this will stop up a, v, uh, a wizard, which I already prepared the replication. So you can see it to which Azure subscription, which Azure location, which recovery world in Azure, uh, get, that VM gets replicated. The only thing I need to choose is the storage account uh, I want to. And then I click on protect VM and this will replicate the VM, start replicating the VM to Azure. However, that will take a while. So I already prepared 
app01 here. Uh, and already, this is already replicated to Azure. You can also see that it's protected here. And if I click on that link, I basically go to the Azure portal and it brings me directly to the recovery services vault. And you can see here, here, my VM name, app01, it's healthy, it's protected, meaning that it just constantly replicates changes of that virtual machine. Now, if I go deeper into it, you can see here again, the health status, for example, that it's healthy. You can see protected again. And you can also see that the last change really happened like five seconds ago. However, there are some things we need to configure before we actually do a failover. And I'm quickly going to show you that. So first of all, Azure Site Recovery is smart. It takes the name of the VM, but I need to uh, enter a resource group in case of a failover. It also picks the right VM size, matching the on-prem VM size. And then I obviously also need to select the virtual network in Azure where I want to connect to. But I'm, in the sake of time, I'm not going to do that right now. We're going to have a look at plant failover, failover, and test failover. And let's start with test failover here. So when I'm setting up disaster recovery, uh, that's great, right? Um, and I'm being, I guess I'm now prepared in case something happens to that Hyper-V server that I can fail over app 01. However, I don't want to wait until something happens uh, to know if that replication really works. So what I can do is a test failover. Now a test failover, will basically use a completely isolated virtual network and, fail, and basically start up that virtual machine in Azure to test. Um, while the replication is still running and it does not impact any production environment, it just gives me a way of testing that VM and see if the application in that VM is actually running. Then I have failover. And this is basically what I'm using to failover a uh, VM. So let's say the Hyper-V server or the location where that Hyper-V server is, is not available anymore because a disaster striked or something is broken. Um, so in that case, I just can go out now and press the failover button. And this will then create a VM in Azure, uh, connected to the virtual network. And obviously you can start working from there and basically connect to that VM and that application. And then the last thing really is the plant failover scenario. Now, if I know that I have a data center maintenance tomorrow, I can basically go out and um, already fail over my virtual machine. Now with the failover button, usually it just takes the last recovery point. Now, if I have a plant failover, I don't want to lose any data. So what I can do, if I hit the plant failover button, it will shut down my on-prem VM, replicate the latest changes, and then start up that VM in Azure. So I don't have any data loss at all. Now again, Azure Site Recovery is an awesome tool. Uh, that said, um, you don't pay for the VMs. Uh, you, like, uh, you only start paying for the VMs when they're actually created in Azure. So when you do a failover, uh, doesn't matter if it's a test failover, planned failover, or a, just a failover, but the only thing you pay is actually a fee for the replication. And guess what? The first 31 days are free. So it's also a great tool to actually migrate servers to Azure. Now, this was a quick demo about Azure Site Recovery. And what we actually did here is we had a Hyper-V server, like in one of our Tailwind Traders branch offices, and we replicated that to Azure. Um, so in a case of a disaster, we can basically start it up in Azure. Now we can obviously also use that for larger sites where you have hyper, larger Hyper-V clusters, even using System Center, but we can also even use it for VMware or physical servers as well, right? So we can basically use it for our on-prem VMware environment to replicate all those VMs to Azure. But Azure Site Recovery is not only about um, replication, it really is also about orchestration. Now, if we just replicate one or two VMs, the thing I just showed you is fine. But if we have like a couple of VMs, we usually have dependencies. And for that, we can uh, create a um, recovery plan. A recovery plan is basically a list of steps which happens when you press it. So you can basically group your VMs and say, hey, I want to fail over my domain controllers first. After that, my um, after those are failover, uh, the failover happened, they were running. I want to fail over my SQL servers and the last, for example, then the um, application servers. Now you can also add um, manual steps to it. So you can say, hey, just okay, fail over these two virtual machines. And now I know 
I need to do something, um, um, basically go and maybe change a DNS setting somewhere where I can't auto automate it. Or you can add a Azure automation runbook to it. So you can even automate processes like this. And in the best case scenario, you have one button you need to press and you can fail over your entire data center um, to Azure, but also to another location using the orchestration engine in Azure Site Recovery. So switching on to the next challenge. One of the largest challenges of Tailwind traders, and I think many, many companies have, have the same challenge as well, is actually keeping their server systems up to date, right? Uh, so Tailwind traders has physical and virtual servers running on-prem, running in the cloud. They have Windows, they have Linux, and they need to basically have the current software updates installed. So they need to have a way to basically check if they're actually compliant with that. Um, and then if not, they actually need to go out and deploy these software updates to those systems. Doesn't matter where they are running. Now, for that, we're gonna have a look at how does Tailwind Traders ensure that both servers running in the cloud as well as on-prem have the most recent software updates applied. And for that, I'm gonna show you a demo about Azure Update Management. So here I'm in the Azure portal. And you can see here, I have, I'm already in my automation account uh, in the update management solution. So again, that is where you basically have Azure, where the home of Azure automation is. And you can see here in the middle of the screen, I already have an Azure VM um, joined to that uh, update management solution. And you can see here it's compliant. Uh, it's running on Azure. It's a Windows operating system. And again, it's basically patched and it's compliant with what I want. Now, what I can do next is basically I could go out and just add more Azure VMs if I wanted to, or I can basically onboard non-Azure virtual machines and this link will bring me to the documentation. Now, since I'm using Windows Admin Center, onboarding VMs to Azure Update Management is very, very simple. So I scroll down to the update extension and this one is basically just there to manage my updates on that specific system so I can use that manually. However, I want to basically onboard my server to update management to that centralized place. So I click on update now, and this basically allows me to log in um, to my Azure environment, select the subscription, select the resource group where my update management is in. It will automatically select the Azure region. I can then say, hey, which log analytics workspace should the VM be connected because that's how update management works. And then which automation account uh, do we want? And this is the automation account I already showed you before in the Azure portal. I click on setup and this will now automatically go out, um, download the specific agents, which we need, uh, install them, and then connecting that server to Azure, to our update management solution. Now, if I go back to the Azure portal now, you will see that I now see that server as a non-Azure VM and as not compliant. So let's change that and let's schedule an update deployment. Now I give that update deployment a name. In our case, I just want to do my on-prem system right now. So I call it on-prem. I can choose if I want to update Windows or Linux machines, and then I can select the machines. I can use groups to do that. So I can group, I can also dyna create dynamic group groups. In my case, I'm just going to select a simple machine here to make it very easy. So I'm just going to select that new machine. Um, but again, in production, you will probably work with groups um, uh, to do that. Then you select what update classifications you want to install. You can include and exclude updates and then you schedule that update deployment. So we're going to select the time, the date and the time when we want to update. We can also make it a recurring um, task. So you can do like weekly updates or monthly updates where we basically go out and install the latest patches. You can run some pre and post scripts and you can configure the reboot um, options here. So in my case, if a reboot is required after patching, please reboot the system. Now this will now create that deployment shop. And because we have this great thing called video, we can basically go out and go uh, out in, in time, go forward in time uh, to actually have a look at the deployment schedule. You can see here now it's basically scheduled for a specific date. And when that date is happening and the time is happening, I can go to history and you can see here now it's already done. 
Uh, it took 10 minutes um, to basically do that. If I go on that shop, I can basically see uh, what actually happened. So I can see everything is screened. That's good. I patched one machine and installed three updates on that specific machine. And if I now go back to the portal, I can see here all my machines in Azure as well as non-Azure VMs are now compliant with my update policy. Again, this is a very simple demo with just two machines, but think about it if you just have multiple version, more servers in there, like tens or hundreds or even thousands of machines, you need to have a patching solution. Uh, Azure Update Management can help you with that. Again, it's for Windows and for Linux machines as well. So that is Azure Update Management. Azure Update Management checks the compliance state of Windows and Linux machines on-prem, in Azure, or at all the cloud providers as well. I can then go out and deploy and install software updates for all of these. And then this really helps you to avoid having different tools, like having a tool in Azure, having a tool on-prem, having a tool at another cloud provider. Uh, it just gives you a centralized solution to manage your server updates. Now, this is how it works. So basically it goes out uh, and it assesses updates. Um, it then can go out and deploy updates, verifies the compliance and starts the process uh, again. So you always know if your servers are basically compliant. The great thing, if you run, for example, Azure Stack Hub, uh, there is an easy way, an extension to automate your VMs running on Azure Stack Hub. And they will even show up as Azure VMs because Azure Stack Hub basically gives you Azure as a platform, right? So how does Tailwind traders make sure that their file servers are replicated, have enough capacity and are prepared for backup and disaster recovery? Now, this is a big challenge for many of us, right? We have great tools out there. We now have like things like SharePoint Online, um, OneDrive and solutions like this. However, in some cases we still need file servers, right? And so we need, we can leverage basically Azure as a great solution to replicate these file servers and have some extra benefits as well, uh, which I will show you here in a bit. Before you sh I show you the demo, I will quickly want to give you an overview about the Tailwind Traders environment. Now, here we have a file server called File Server One, which is based in New York. Uh, and you can see here different users are using the files on that file server, uh, also applications which probably access that file share uh, to do certain things. Now what Tailwind Traders already did is they connect, they installed Azure FileSync and connected um, their file server basically to an Azure file share. Um, this is an SMB share running in Azure, uh, like basically a serverless file share if you will, and it replicates uh, all the data from that file server to that file share. And this already gives them a great new feature called cloud tiering. So you know that Tailwind Traders needs to do a, deal with a lot of data um, from their users. So if you're having like uh, files which are probably 10 years old, five years old, no one need like really cleans these up. They're not really needed anymore, but you can also not just go out and remove them. Um, so they're just sitting there and taking storage space. Now with cloud tiering, we can say, hey, we only want to keep new files um, directly stored on that file server. You can still see the old files, but what happens if someone access an old file, um, they will basically go out and download it from the Azure file share in the background. Um, so it takes a little bit longer until that file opens, but you also save um, basically disk space on that file server. The other thing you get is immediate cloud access. So if you have VMs running in Azure or you basically also from other locations, you can now access that Azure file share as well. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that um, after the demo. And then this now gives me also the um, capability to, to have multi-site multi sync. So I can now synchronize um, that file share to another file server, for example, the file server two, which is in Seattle. Um, so basically I have now the same files on in both locations. And then since the files are already stored on that Azure file share, why not take advantage of Azure backup, which can actually backup the file shares instead of running a backup solution with tapes and all of that uh, on each of these locations. So Azure backup 
can go out and back up all the files centrally on that Azure file share and even do give you give your retention rate for up to 99 years right so you all you're basically saved also for the long term backups as well now this is not just great for like having that workflow and everything in process but also if you have a disaster right so if for example your file server 2 for some reason um is destroyed or doesn't work anymore, what you usually do is send out your users in the Seattle office, try to fix the server or repair it or get a new one and then set everything up and then start restoring from backup. Now with Azure File Sync, it's much, much easier. So you tell your people, you tell basically um, um, your employees to make a little bit longer break. You set up a new server called Server Free. You install the Azure File Sync agent it will automatically download all the metadata. So people will automatically, after a couple of minutes, see all the files, and then basically they can go out and access those already. They're not stored already or downloaded on the machine uh, immediately, because that will take some time. But every time a user goes and opens up a file, it will download um, that file from the Azure file share. So you can really reduce the downtime caused by an outage of your file server. So this all sounds great. Let's have a quick look at Azure File Sync. So here I'm on my file service here one, the one in New York. You can see here I have my file share zero one uh, with some folders um, for engineering, marketing and sales, and also my super important files folder, which stores a couple of super important files. So as I said, this is already set up to sync to the Azure File Sync. So if I go to the Azure portal, you can see here my storage sync service. I created a sync group. That's where everything basically comes together and gets synced. So if I go into that sync group, I, you can see here that I have two endpoints. One is the cloud endpoint and the other one is the server endpoint, our file server 01. You can also see here again, like the file server path and all these files getting synced to the cloud endpoint, between the cloud endpoint and the server endpoint. And the cloud endpoint is nothing else than Azure File Share. And if I go into that storage account and to that Azure File Share, guess what? We can now see all the files, which we also saw on the local file server here. So you can see here our Tailwind Traders Marketing, Engineering, and also our super important files folders. Now, let's see that this is actually working, that that sync is actually working. What I now can go is let's create a new folder. So let's create a new folder. I'm very creative here. I'm going to call it folder one. I'm going to click save. And now if I go back to the Azure file share and I do a refresh of the UI, you will see that um, I have now that folder also on the Azure file share. So this is great. Now let's go back to the um, sync group here. And I want to add obviously our file server two here. So if I go to our file server two, you can see here, that's the one in Seattle, which I showed you before. Um, and basically that's an empty, they got empty share there. So I want to have the same files as I have in New York on that file, um, file server. So again, you can see here, here's the sync group. Um, uh, in Azure, so I can see here that I have a cloud um, endpoint as well as a server endpoint. And now I'm going to basically configure our file server two. And just to verify again, uh, you can see here file server one is already onboarded. So I just go back to Windows Admin Center. I go to file server two. And then you can see here on the left side, I have an extension called Azure File Sync. So I just click on Azure File Sync. And this will show me basically a video about the things I just told you, how to set up Azure File Sync and how it works. But for me, I just want to set it up. So the first thing we need to do is basically go out and install the Azure File Sync agent. We can directly do that from Windows Admin Center. I also want to keep that always up to date. So now this Azure File Sync agent will be updated through Microsoft Update or Windows Update. Um, on your server, so you always have the latest version, which gives you new features and capabilities um, as well. So this will download and install the agent. Now, the next step I need to do is basically um, 
register that specific server. And for that, I need to first obviously log in to um, Azure again, then select the subscription where I want to replicate where my, my storage sync service is, the resource group for the storage sync service. And you can now see here, I have my file sync here, one here. That's the storage sync service I showed you in the Azure portal. I click on register. And now if you have a newer server, uh, a version of Windows Admin Center, you can already like do all the things here in Windows Admin Center. But for now, we go basically and configure that um, in the Azure portal. So I switch back to the Azure portal. Here you can see our storage sync service with our sync group. And what I wanna do now is basically add a new server endpoint for file server two. I select file server two, I give it the path for the file share. And you can see here now, I can already configure cloud tiering while joining that server or registering that server. So I say, hey, I wanna keep 20% free on that server volume. And then I also wanna, I only wanna have the day, like the files which are basically younger than 60 days, right? And then I click create. And this will now provision my server and will start the sync process and adding that server endpoint basically to that. And if I now go back to file server two in Seattle, you can see here, all the folders just show up, all the files and folders are now there on that file share as well. Now, to show that, that it actually works, I create now a new folder, again, very creative, folder two. And if I go now to the Azure portal, and go to my file share and then do a refresh in the UI again. You can see here now, we can also see folder two here and automatically replicate it. And guess what? If I go to my server uh, in New York, my file server one, and if I do a refresh here in Explorer, you can see here now I have folder two here available as well. And it's just automatically sync between these different servers. This also obviously works with files and file changes and uh, you can also add more servers than just two, right? So you can, if you have multiple locations, you can basically add more of these. And you can use like sync groups to, if you have different file shares you want to sync, you can use the, um, uh, different uh, sync groups to do that. So that was Azure a demo about Azure File Sync. What I want to highlight is also something we announced uh, in 2020 is the preview of Active Directory authentication support for Azure Files. Now. While Azure File Sync is great, some of our customers said, hey, why do I even want a server on-prem for this, 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 this cache, if you will? Uh, why don't I just directly access um, the Azure File Share in Azure and mount that? So this also helps if your people, like if your employees are uh, working from home or from remote places and they still need access to that file share, they can directly access now that file share and now you have Active Directory authentication integration basically into these Azure files. Um, still, you probably wanna have a look at um, having a server on-prem, especially if you don't wanna rely on internet connectivity. Uh, but now you have that flexible choice where you can say, hey, I don't wanna have a server at all here, or here, I wanna have a server um, and everything is replicated. And in case internet goes down, I can still access my files and as soon as internet is back, it will start syncing again. So. They're really great choices and you combine, can combine these. Um, it's not uh, either or choice, you can really do, uh, uh, do that. So let's move on. How does Tailwind Traders make sure that service across Azure on-premises and other cloud providers are compliant, configured and managed in a single control plane? So I really wanna figure out that like all the servers in Tailwind Traders are compliant with my environment and get an overview of all of these. And trust me, for some customers, having an overview about all their servers is not that easy, right? I, if I ask them for a list of all their systems, usually tell me, yeah, come back in two weeks, we will create that list for you. Um, but actually what I want to is, especially when it comes to compliance, I wanna see all my, ser my servers running, wherever they're running, and I also wanna see that they're compliant. So let me show you a quick demo here uh, using Azure Arc as a cloud operator, which needs to make sure that you see all the systems, you can manage all the servers across your environment. So here I'm in the Azure portal, and as you can see here, I can see all my resources, all my Azure resources. Now, wouldn't it be great to also see 
my on-prem or non-Azure resources running again on-premises or at other cloud providers. Now, we can actually do that. So let's just for the select the type. So I'm gonna just type machines. Um, I only wanna see my virtual machines in Azure and my machines onboarded using Azure Arc. So now you can see here my Azure virtual machines as well as my on-prem servers like File Server 1 and File Server 2. Um, they can run at different cloud providers. They can run at local data centers. Uh, and you can see here, my, obviously my Azure servers, they run in Azure. So I'm using tagging to basically define the location. I can also like group these now so I get a better overview about what servers are actually ARC, what, what are basically virtual machines in Azure. Um, I can then also go and filter and I can use tagging. So I have a tag for cost center. So I wanna see all my VMs in cost center uh, 1001. And you can see here now I can see all my servers uh, if they run in Azure or if they run on-prem or at other cloud providers. So I can see them all belong to the same cost center in one single view. Well, that's great, right? So we have the view now, but there's much, much more. I also wanna make sure that they're compliant. And for that, we have something called uh, Azure policies. And Azure policies and Azure guest configuration policies allow me to also configure and manage the guest operating systems for Azure uh, VMs. However, with Azure Arc, we can also extend this to non-Azure VMs. So here I'm in the assignment, I create a new uh, initiative assignment, which is basically just a set of policies. I can then select management groups, the subscription I want to assign it, or even down to the resource group. I then select the initiative definition. And so we have a couple of these built in. Um, so one ex example is like, let's, let's search for password is one which basically goes out and audits VMs for insecure password security settings. So this one would go out and I already deployed this and I will show you that in a bit. So let's have a look at how our servers are doing. And so I already deployed here a couple of things and if you go to the overview tab, you can also see what's going on. You can see the, the assignments and the compliance of my environment. If I wanna see a little bit more, I go to compliance and here I can see that, hey, I have certain um, initiatives or policies which are not really compliant. So let's have a look at that. This initiative here audits Windows VMs that are not set to a specific time zone. So I wanna have like a set a specific time zone to all my Windows VMs. And if I'm gonna have a look at what servers there actually are, I can now see my on-prem machines as well as my Azure VMs as well, side by side, and I can see everything, every resource which is not compliant. So I can now go out and reach out to the server admin um, or the server owner to basically go out and change that. Or I could even go out and create a remediation task basically to fix this as well for my Azure VMs. So how do we actually do this? Now, Azure Arc really, what it really does is uh, extending Azure Resource Manager for non-Azure resources. So this is a quick architectural overview about Azure management. And if we start from the left, you can see we as an Azure customer, if we interact with Azure using the portal, PowerShell, the CLI, um, we are basically um, interacting with Azure Resource Manager, which has all the power of tags and groups, RBAC, subscription management, and so on. And Again, before Azure Arc, we could basically just go out and manage all our Azure resources and services with it. Uh, but wouldn't it be great um, to also manage our Azure resources with the same Azure resource and uh, non-Azure resources with the same Azure resource manager? So with Azure Arc, we can do that. We can actually onboard our servers uh, to the Azure resource manager. And you can see here, there are also other things like Kubernetes clusters, which we can onboard running uh, on-premises or other cloud providers, or even Azure data services. Uh, again, this does not replace the local tools, but it really helps us extending that and getting that like Azure Resource Manager as a single control plane. So the question now is I showed you how I get an overview about all my systems. Now, how does Tailwind Traders application administrators manage their servers and make sure that their systems are compliant 
uh, with the company policies. Now let's think about, I'm like the file server admin and I need to figure out, okay, am I, are my servers compliant with the policies uh, and how can I actually manage them using Azure Arc? So for that, we go back into the Azure pro, uh, portal and we go actually go to uh, Azure Arc. And we get an overview, as I mentioned here, we can like organize and govern all our servers, but we can also sign up for the private preview of Kubernetes or Azure Data Services. But for now, we obviously wanna manage our servers. So we go Azure Arc for servers. You can see here all my on-premises uh, or hybrid servers running at other cloud providers, they're connected. Let's have a look at server two here, how that actually looks like. And you can see here, it looks like an Azure resource, right? I get some information about that. I see that it's connected. I see an activity log. I can do role-based access to that resource. I can also use tagging. So for this demo here, for example, that VM, that server two runs here uh, on my Surface Pro. So I can basically go out and set location uh, to Surface Pro and then click on save. And now I added that tag. And again, probably no servers are not running on a Surface Pro. They're probably running in a um, data centers, but you get the point here. We can also go out and have a look at these policies. So now I see all the policies assigned to that specific server too. And you can see I'm basically compliant except for one assignment, uh, which is the one I just showed you before. It's the audit VMs with insecure password settings. Now, this basically is, a, is an initiative with a set of policies. So I can see here all the policies I'm not compliant with. I can also see the ones I actually am compliant with. Um, but actually I'm interested in what the one I'm not really compliant and see how what's actually wrong. So this one is about uh, show auditing results for Windows VMs that are uh, allow reuse of the previous 24 passwords. And now I can also see some more information about this and it will bring me to the right point in the Azure portal and basically go out, hey, what is actually wrong with it and how would I fix it? Um, for some cases, I could also then just go out and create a remediation task um, if it allows me to. I also get access to logs. Now, if you have used Azure Log Analytics, uh, you knew that they go to a central log analytics workspace. And basically if you have access to it, you see all the logs in that log analytics workspace. Now with Azure Arc, you only get the logs for that specific server too you have access to. So I can basically go out and um, browse the different logs and run queries uh, against it. So for example, let's see what update, like let's go to logs and figure out what updates are installed and which updates are missing. So we get that list here without even the need to go out and RDPing into that server or using anything else, we can find that centralized. So if that server is running in a branch office, it's super easy to basically manage that as well from a centralized place. Now let's have a look how we actually add a server. So I click on add and this basically gives me two options right now. It's add, use, add a machine using an interactive script, which basically prompts me for the password and leave login. Or if I do multiple machines at scale, then I probably don't wanna log in on every machine. You can run a script and use a service principle to basically onboard your machines. Now for now, we're gonna use the interactive method to generate the script. So as you can see, we need to select the subscription. We need to join it to a resource group and we also need to select the region. Right now in preview, you get these uh, three, re you have these three regions available. Um, and then you also say, hey, what operating system I want to onboard. If it's a Windows machine or Linux machine, um, depending on that, we will generate the script. I can also set up a proxy server if needed. So if the server is behind a proxy, I also want to configure uh, the agent using a proxy. And then I can already add some tags to that resource before I even like run the script, I can already make sure that I already have the tags in place. And then at the end, I get the script to download, which I then can run on that machine, or I can just have a look at it and copy paste it. And it basically goes out and downloads the agent. It installs the agent and then runs the command to register that server and that agent to the Azure resource manager using Azure Arc. Now, if you have Windows Admin Center in place, you can also use Windows Admin Center um, to onboard that server very, very simply. Now, this is actually how it looks like. I just wanna show you that we're actually using an agent. Uh, it's only an outgo outgoing connection uh, using HTTPS. Um, and if you are uh, deploying a 
uh, machine Azure, you're probably familiar with the guest agent, which basically allows us to have extensions like monitoring. And in the case of Azure Arc, we have the Azure Connect machine agent, which basically can use the same extension model as well. Now, Azure Arc, again, can do much, much more than I just showed you. I really limited on um, joining uh, servers uh, to Azure Arc, but again, it allows you also to do things like Kubernetes management, um, app deployment on Kubernetes, as well as uh, managing Azure data services on-prem. So this is basically an overview about our hybrid environment. Again, we didn't really talk about our Azure Stack portfolio with Azure Stack Hub, uh, Azure Stack Edge, and Azure Stack HCI, as well as our IoT um, uh, offerings as well. But I hope this gives you a great idea how actually our hybrid solution can combine uh, Azure um, with your on-premises environment or your other cloud providers and make your hybrid environment even better. In this session, you learned how you, uh, about the different Azure hybrid services, uh, how you basically use Azure Site Recovery for disaster recovery, uh, how you leverage Azure hybrid services um, using Azure Update Management, how you use Azure File Sync to keep your servers in sync and also use advanced features like cloud tiering, and then how you govern and manage your servers using Azure Arc. If you want to learn more, you can basically go out to Microsoft documentation. Uh, here are a couple of links. One is about the hybrid service in Windows Admin Center. There you find all the links to the things I just showed you. And then also, if you want to onboard your service using Azure Arc, uh, you can also do that as well. Uh, I also recommend that you look at my, uh, Microsoft Learn, where we have some great learning modules where you can go out, it's free. Uh, where you can basically read through, you have some questions you need to answer, and in some cases you also get some sandboxes where you can actually try things out with even having an own Azure subscription. And for that, you can download all the resources of this session on our GitHub repositories. I highly recommend also that you look at certifications. So we have the Azure Fundamentals exam, as well as the Azure Administrator uh, exam as well. And for that, I want to say thank you. I hope you enjoyed hybrid management technologies.